A child is born in the heart of Cold War Russia. He is different than the others. He is curious and funny. Perhaps a little too funny for his own good. He talks about things that are not socially correct. About freedom, opportunity. The government is nervous. How will they silence him? In 1977, they find a solution. The U.S. sends them millions of tons of wheat, and they send us Yakov Smirnov. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Yakov Smirnov, and as you know, I'm originally from Russia. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm an American now. Yes. It's great to be an American. Actually, in my high school yearbook, I was voted most likely to be an American. I bet you never expected that things would change and the world would change the way it has in the last few years. Have you ever expected that Russia is not going to have a communist party? Do you realize that America is probably going to be the only country that has the communist party? <laughs> I bet you never expected that America is going to be asked to dismantle Russia's nuclear missiles. This is what's happening right now. Yeltsin is asking Clinton to give him money to dismantle nuclear missiles. We don't have money to give away here, so I have a better idea. We borrow those nuclear missiles from the Russians, bring them to New York, park them in a dark alley overnight. <laughs> They'd be dismantled in no time. And other things Russians now are asking to send them ambitious, aggressive people from America. I think that's a great idea. We should send them some. The ones that we can spare. Like personal injury attorneys. <laughs> IRS agents. <laughs> and those people from Mway. <laughs> Talking about Russia reminds me of my childhood. Uh, I want to take a moment to tell you a little story. I remember when I was a little kid, one summer day, my dad took me for a walk just as the sun was setting over Moscow. And it was a beautiful sight. And my dad said to me, son, look up in the sky and tell me what you see. And I said, there's nothing there. Then he sat us on the bench and as the skies grew dim, the stars started to come out. And he said, now what do you see? I said, well, the stars are coming out, but I'm bored. Let's go. As we were going home, he said to me, son, what I'm trying to tell you, stars really never came out. They were always there. And the point is, sometimes, even though we look, we don't always see. And I will never forget that I was only eight years old and I was taken by the moment. I said, Dad, you need a hobby. <laughs> but I really, for the longest time, I couldn't understand what my dad was talking about until I started living the American dream. I'm married to an American woman. And when man gets married in America, it looks like he becomes the head of the family. <laughs> but no one tells you that woman becomes the neck of the family. <laughs> and she turns the head anywhere she wants. <laughs> Sometimes you get whiplash. That's why we say we have a pain in the neck. <laughs> I'm married to a, a woman from Oregon. Anybody here from Oregon by chance? Applaud if you are. Do you know Linda? 
I, uh, I realize how conservative people in Oregon are when I met her parents. Would you agree that people in Oregon are pretty conservative? Would you say that Russian son-in-law is not number one on their wish list? <laughs> Maybe after Spotted Owl? <laughs> I, uh, I met her, uh, her parents. Uh, her mom was really trying. I mean, she still uh, tries. She reads things about Russia. She wants to make me feel at home. Last time I was there, in a the guest bathroom, there was no toilet paper. Her dad is a big American outdoorsman with a very strange sense of humor. The other day I saw him and he said to me, have you heard this one? Russian family could never get the group portrait taken because every time photographer would say cheese, they would form a straight line. <laughs> And I got to tell you, I realize now how different we are, Linda and I, or how different our backgrounds are when we had our children. We have now two kids. And the difference are incredible. First of all, Linda wanted, uh, when our daughter was born, uh, to call her real American name, Brandy. And I said, Brandy Smirnoff? Why don't we just send her to Betty Ford Daycare Center? <laughs> uh, raising kids, you know, you, you fall back on the things that you knew from your childhood. For example, now Alexander, our little one, is a year old, and he's sucking his thumb because he's teething. My mom used to put pepper on my thumb. And I did that with Alexander, and Linda said to me, this is the most barbaric thing i ever seen. You don't put pepper on baby's thumb, you put Tabasco sauce on. <laughs> They're tough in Oregon. <laughs> and then, uh, the other day, I was putting Alexander to bed, and he was cranky, and I was, uh, I was singing Russian lullaby, and I'm singing, Chizik, Pizik, Dead the Will, Na Fontani, Vod Kupil. And my wife is staring at me, is this a communist chant? <laughs> I said, no, it's a sweet lullaby. You know, it says, uh, little birdie, where were you? I drank vodka with a few. <laughs> On my wife's face, I can see, pull over, step away from the vehicle. <laughs> I said, wait, wait, wait a minute. What about the songs you're singing, like uh, rock a -bye Baby? When the bow breaks, the cradle will fall, and down will come baby cradle and all. Not the most comforting thought. <laughs> Sounds like insurance company jingle. <laughs> At least they could have put a bungee cord on it. <laughs> my, my wife said to me, I'll show you how uh, to put a baby to sleep. She takes Alexander from me, she puts him in a bassinet. She puts bassinet on top of the dryer. She turned on the dryer. Two minutes later, he was sound asleep. I'm going, oh, great. All other kids are going to go to daycare center. I have to drop him off at the laundromat. <laughs> I'm learning a lot. I'm learning to, to change diapers, you know, and uh, I like doing that. We use cloth diapers because it's good for the environment. Not the environment in your own home. <laughs> it's like having toxic waste dump in your home. <laughs> when we have friends over, I go, this is our bedroom, this is our kitchen, and this is Chernobyl. <laughs> now, now, kids are, are so amazing. You know, I, I just, uh, yeah, there they are. I mean, they, they are so inquisitive, they're so much fun. And Natasha is now in that stage when she says no a lot. And uh, I made a little video that I would like to share with you. And uh, um, this is a video I'll probably be able to use later on in life. And here it is. That's Natasha. Natasha? Will you need a car for your 16th birthday? No. Will you need um, diamonds? No. 
Will you need... Will you need credit cards? No. Will you need an attorney to prove this video is no good? Yeah. Now, now, she, I have this weird laugh, and, and she picked up my laugh, and here's... <laughs> You're so cute. The, the other day, Linda and I went to a restaurant and we left her with a new babysitter and the babysitter called us in panic, going, Mr. Smirnov, does Natasha has asthma? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, <laughs> he goes, never mind. <laughs> oh, I, I just, uh, I, I have the best time, you know, the, with them. They, they, they question things, they want to know everything. And I love having fun with the kids, but I also realize that be responsible parents, I need to discipline. And this is the toughest part, you know, because you read some, you read some books, and some books say, don't ever spank a child. And some say, oh, beat the crap out of them. <laughs> Let me ask the audience, how many of you, by applause, believe that you should never spank a child? Applaud. If you <laughs> and how many of you feel it's okay to spank? Well, I guess these people have a little bit more practice, huh? <laughs> so let me ask the people who don't spank. What, would you, what do you do instead of spanking? How do you discipline? Time, time out. Time, my, my wife likes this. She, she puts Natasha on the chair, and she makes her think of what she's done. And I'm saying, honey, she's thinking how she can do it next time without getting caught. <laughs> And Linda said, no, 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 this is the place where children think of their problems. And I said, you know, adults have the same thing. We call it happy hour. <laughs> Any other ones? Time out is one. What else? I'm sorry? Get them with the bowl bag? Is that like Saddam Hussein technique or something? What else? Sit them on the chair. So you would, you would sit them on the chair, and then every time they would ask, when can I get off the chair? You say, 15 minutes longer. So are they still on the chair? <laughs> what else? Lock them in the room. Do you know the guy with a ball bat? What else? Anything else? I'm sorry, ma'am? Put them in the cradle. Put them in the cradle and wait till the bow breaks. How many kids do you have? You don't have any? How many did you have? My, my father-in-law does not believe in spanking, but he is pro-capital punishment. Spanking is not okay, but the electric chair is fine. In his house, when you're grounded, there's a cord attached. What else? I'm sorry, being violent. Like what? Like slapping you? So you smack him and you say, we don't hit people? That makes sense. <laughs> what else? What else we deserve? I'm sorry? Uh, Ma'am? Oh, lying. Lying. What did you call it? Fibbing. Fibbing. <laughs> fibbing. <laughs> hey, Billy Bob, you want to go fibbing? 
What age do you stop spanking? When they're bigger than you. <laughs> when they say, Dad, this is going to hurt you more. <laughs> My mom said to me, I would never spank a child. I said, Mom, I was there. <laughs> My, My mom, to discipline me, she used to scare me with Baba Yaga, which is like a wicked witch. She would say, Baba Yaga is going to come and take you away. And I'm living in this communal apartment with 12 other families. We have no hot water, bathrooms outside. Being taken away did not sound bad. <laughs> I, I said, Mom, what time is she coming? <laughs> and kids, I also surprised me how inquisitive and interested they are. Natasha walks around all the time going, Daddy, what's that? What's that? What's that? And you better have an answer. You know, I, she would have me, what's that, Daddy? It's, a, it's an apple. Apple. What's that? It's the president. Hillary. <laughs> the, other, the other day, I was, uh, I was changing uh, Alexander, and this is where some strange things happen. You see, kids... Kids, um, especially when you have a boy and a girl, the questions start coming about sexuality. And I remember when I was uh, uh, 13 years old, my parents did not talk about it at all. I asked my dad, I said, Dad, tell me about the facts of life. And he said, you'll be standing in line for food <laughs> until the stars come out. So I, I, I was changing Alexander, and uh, Natasha, Natasha happened to be in the same room. So she's standing next to me, and, uh, and I'm changing Alexander, and she says to me, Daddy, what's that? What's that? And I, I'm going, Linda, what's that? What's that? <laughs> And neither of us knew what we should tell her to call it. Now I'm wondering, how did we have a child in the first place? <laughs> then Linda comes up with a great idea. She says, why don't we just tell her what it is? And I said, wow, that's a great idea, honey. What is it? <laughs> she said, you know what it is. I said, yes, you say it. <laughs> she said, I'm not going to say it. You say it. I said, let's call Howard Stern. He'll say it. <laughs> and then, and then uh, uh, I said, Linda, let's just think about this. When you were a little girl and you ask your parents, what's that? What did they tell you? And she said, they told me, forget about it. <laughs> now I'm laughing. And she's going, okay, Mr. Wise Guy, what did your parents call it? I said, Zabudia Beta. <laughs> which means forget about it. <laughs> In Russia, we had an old uh, expression, show me your child and I'll tell you what he, you are. And uh, a good example of that is my, uh, my wife's best girlfriend, Rusty. Um, she has got a little son who is uh, uh, Natasha's age. And I first time met Rusty and her son at the picnic by the lake in Oregon. And Rusty is kind of a different woman. Uh, I, I didn't realize that. But her son ran up to Natasha. And first thing he wanted to do is to punch her in the face. And I grab his little hand. And, and Rusty comes over and says, I don't say to my child, and oh. I said, really? Then soon you'll be taking packages to J-A-I-L. <laughs> and I, I look at Rusty, and she's tough, tough uh, lady, and, and she is wearing this T-shirt that says, practice safe sex, use a padded headboard. <laughs> 
Linda introduces us, and I said, it's very nice to meet you, Rusty. And she said, so you're that commie creep who stole my best friend. <laughs> now, I'm realizing this is my, bi my wife's best friend. So I'm looking for something nice. Because my dad says, you have to look to see. And I'm looking real hard, but I feel like Ray Charles. <laughs> and then Rusty says, so Yak, all of a sudden I was downgraded from commie creep to farm animal from Yugoslavia. <laughs> she points to the lake, says, Yak, are you man enough to go parasailing? And I'm thinking, I'm not sure about me, but you are. <laughs> and my wife said, I'd like to go parasailing. So <laughs> we're parasailing. <laughs> and I went up there, and I was pretty, pretty good. I did pretty good. I should have worn brown pants. It was my first time. I was okay. I came down and I was in one piece and I came over to Linda and Rusty and they're both smiling and Rusty said, you did pretty good. You should have worn brown pants. <laughs> and uh, to be fair, Linda has to put up with some of my friends and my parents. My, uh, uh, when I was invited to perform at the White House, uh, by mistake, they called my dad. My dad does not speak good English. So he called my wife, very upset. And he says to her, somebody called from Washington and they want uh, Yaakov to go there and perform in front of the bushes. He said, tell him that that will get him arrested. <laughs> but you see, my parents came to America in their 60s. And um, in Russia, uh, retirement age is 65, and average lifespan is 62. <laughs> so when they came here, they really did not know what they're going to be doing in America. So I'm very happy that now they got a job. They're actually managing an apartment building. And my mom is very good at this. I mean, she's uh, in charge uh, collecting rent money. And she came up with a great idea. She gives candy bars to children of tenants when they bring rent check. So now those children bug their parents <laughs> for rent money. <laughs> Some months, my mom receives two, three checks from each apartment. <laughs> Another thing, my dad is a maintenance man. And he uh, feels that maintenance man needs to have a walkie-talkie. So he didn't want to spend much money. He bought one of those baby crib monitors. <laughs> and I gave him some of those nice walkie-talkies. I felt it was his dream. Why not have him? And he has nobody to talk to. <laughs> My mom hates those things. My dad walks around all day going, Clara? Clara, come in. Roger! And my mom yells out the window, What? What do you want? And who is Roger? <laughs> when we bought our house in Los Angeles, Linda and I, um, we bought a fixer-upper. Linda liked it because it didn't have a kitchen. <laughs> And so my dad said he's going to fix it up. So I bought him some of those Time Life books, How to Fix Things. He became like a real general contractor. First week, he didn't show up. <laughs> Second week, he filed for workman's comp. So I said, Dad... You know, don't worry, Linda, don't worry, I'll fix things up. And I'm not very handy. I'm standing there, and I, I, I got a can of paint, and I'm painting the house. And I'm sweating. And Linda walks up, and she said, why are you dressed like this? I said, well, on the can of paint, it says, for better results, put on two coats.
And then my, my cousin was around, and he was visiting uh, from Russia. And he wanted to help out uh, to fix the house as well. And he wanted to fix the roof. And I said, I don't want you in the roof. And he said, no, I'll be very, very careful. Don't worry. I said, okay, on one condition. If you put a rope around your waist and you throw it over the house and you tie it to something solid in the ground so you don't fall. I come back, he's lying in the ground. I'm going, Yuri, didn't you do what I said? He said, yes, I did. I put a rope around my waist. I threw it over the house. I tied it to something solid in the ground. And you got in it and drove away. <laughs> Then about a week later, he's supposed to go back to Russia, and he said to me, please, can I borrow your car? And I didn't want to give him a car, but then I figured, well, I felt guilty that he fell down. Fine. I said, don't be long. He comes back an hour later. He has this woman with him, who is obviously a woman of the evening or a lady of the sidewalk. <laughs> and and he, uh, I, I said to him, Yuri, come here. Come here. What is she doing here? And he said to me, I was driving on Sunset Boulevard and I stopped at red light and she came to my car and she said, I'll do anything for $100. So I figured, let her fix the roof. So he put a rope around her waist and... Oh... Ah, some people just don't know how to do things at all, you know, it's just, uh, it's amazing. I, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying this American, oh. Um. <laughs> I guess tonight is a Cajun night. <laughs> during this uh, meltdown. If you, if you have any questions about myself, about, about Russia, anything you'd like to ask, feel free and ask me. I'll be very happy to answer. It's more fun this way. It's also exercising the freedom that you have, which is great. In Russia, now they also have freedom of speech, but here you have freedom after you speak. <laughs> it's a nice little feature. So do feel free and ask anything you'd like. I'll be happy to answer. Yes. Am I an American citizen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, uh, I am very proud to be an American. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I was sworn in at the Statue of Liberty ceremony, July 4th, 1986. It was the best moment of my life. Chief Justice Warren Burger was swearing us in, and he said, my fellow Americans. And for the first time in my life, I'm realizing he's talking to me. And first thought from my mind as a new American was, I hate those foreigners. <laughs> they come here and take our job. <laughs> but I, I feel very fortunate to live in this country. I uh, traveled around the world since I came to America, and I learned something very interesting. You can go to another country. Let's say you go to Italy. You cannot become Italian. You can go to France. You cannot become a Frenchman. But you can come to America and become an American. And I want to thank you very much. I, I, what did I think of America when I first came? I love America from the beginning. I, I mean... Americans have things that we never had in Russia, like warning shots. <laughs> Those are great. In Russia, they didn't shoot up in the air. They would shoot you, and that was warning for the next guy. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Is Yaakov Smirnov my real name? No, ma'am. It used to be Jack Daniels. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. I'm sorry. How did you learn to? I, how did I learn to speak English? I um, I I watched TV for three months, <laughs> and then I realized it was a Spanish station. <laughs> Every year we dress up in our wedding outfits and we have some fun. <laughs> I made this little video. On our first anniversary, we went skiing. <laughs> yeah, I look like a penguin, I guess. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is an old Russian tradition. We kiss the snow before we ski on it. <laughs> now it's much better. <laughs> now, last year, we renewed our vows at NASA. <laughs> this marriage is just out of this world. Hi, I'm sorry, sir, over there. Could you go back to Russia and live now as a Russian? Could I go back to Russia and live now? What, what did I do to you? Yes. Was it hard to learn English? Newspaper ads were so confusing. One said, learn to play guitar, no strings attached. <laughs> I'm going, what a country. <laughs> yes. Who is my favorite American comedian? I like, I like uh, Bill Clinton. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm sorry. Where do I perform in Branson? I have a theater. Uh, I'm in the Osmond Family Complex, and I have a theater there. And um, actually, uh, being in Branson has been interesting. You know, people in Branson check your hearing constantly. They say, you come back, you hear. <laughs> you drive careful, you hear. Uh, then I, I realized some of them don't see very well either. I walked in the restaurant by myself, and the hostess said, hi, y'all. <laughs> and then she said, you all now come back, you hear. I said, we didn't even leave yet. Then I, I had my, uh, my meal, and uh, the waitress comes over and said, would you like some cheesecake? I said, I, I don't like cheesecake. Do you have any jello? She said, oh, yeah, plenty of jello. I have jello coming out of my ears. <laughs> I said, I'll have cheesecake. <laughs> but, uh, but I'll tell you, now uh, performing in Branson, and doing shows there every, uh, every day, I, I'm, I'm just enjoying this a lot. This has been a lot of fun. And my, uh, my in-laws like Branson, too. And uh, I personally invited them to come visit. <laughs> and they showed up. The whole family showed up. And uh, my father-in-law decided to rent a houseboat for a family reunion. I never seen a houseboat before. Doesn't look like floating tool shed. <laughs> and my father-in-law is showing me the boat, and there's only one room. And he said, this is where we're going to sleep. I said, 12 people in one room? That's why I left Russia. <laughs> and tell me if I'm wrong. When families get together, they regress in time. All of a sudden, all rules come out. Like you're supposed to wear an orange life vest. In the bathing suits from the back, we look like half-naked highway workers. 
And then my father-in-law gave each person one styrofoam cup for the whole trip. And he puts names on those cups. Not real names, the ones he feels are appropriate. Like Linda says, Lindsay and her sister said, Pinky, mine said, intruder from the outside. I assumed it was mine. I didn't see Ross Perot anywhere. So then I'm, I'm realizing that I see my wife in a completely different light. She's doing things I've never seen her do before, like cook. And uh, I said to my father-in-law, how did you get her co to cook? And he said, well, if she doesn't, I'll tell everybody a story when she wet her pants in Disneyland. <laughs> I said, oh, come on, children do that. He said, she was 19. <laughs> I said, tell me a couple of more of those stories. He said, I'll tell you those stories when we go camping. We're going to go rough it. We're going to sleep in the woods. I said, isn't it kind of dangerous? He said, not if you have one of these. And he shows me a Swiss army knife. That thing has magnifying glass and clippers. When I'm in the woods, I don't want to see bear this close. And I don't want to do his nails. And then my father-in-law gives me a shovel. And he said, this is what we're going to use when we go to the bathroom. I'm thinking, if this is instead of toilet paper, <laughs> even for Russian standards, that's roughing it. <laughs> and we're sitting, we're sitting uh, uh, by the fire uh, in the woods, and my father-in-law says to me, Yaakov, let me tell you something. Enjoy your children now, because now they think you're great. Couple of years from now, they'll think you're a real geek. I said, how do you know that? He said, because I'm going to tell them. <laughs> wow. And then he said to me, so now there's no more communist party in Russia. What are you going to joke about? I said, don't worry. <laughs> Who needs KGB when you have in-laws? Uh, I'll tell you, this has been so much fun by moving from Los Angeles away from LA. It's great. I mean, there's four seasons in Branson. I mean, it, it's fun. You know, Linda, Linda the likes to go skiing. And I'm not a good skier. I'm not a bad skier. I just never skied before. <laughs> and uh, we, she wanted to go skiing. And uh, uh, we were getting skis, and they're asking me, what's your height? What's your weight? I'm thinking, they're building a box for me already. <laughs> But in Russia, men were trained never to admit that they don't know how to do something that women can do. So I'm trying to get away with it. And I'm doing okay until I was supposed to get off the lift. Took me three times to get off the lift. <laughs> then I fell off. And instead of saying, honey, I'm sorry, I don't know how to ski, I said, and I heard myself say this, I said, oh, in Russia, we didn't use a lift. <laughs> no, they brought me up on a helicopter. <laughs> she goes, okay, Mr. Skier, you want to go higher? I said, sure. We went higher. When we got off that next lift, the only one there was St. Bernard with a nosebleed. And Linda said, you want to go down together? I said, no, 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 no. Where I come from, we give women a head start. <laughs> she said, OK, Mr. Skier, I'll see you down there. And I'm thinking, yes, you will, <laughs> sooner than you think. <laughs> she went down. And I'm now standing on this cliff. And all I can see in my mind is that opening of ABC Sports. <laughs> And the agony of defeat. <laughs> and he was a better skier. <laughs> so I'm standing there and I'm nervous. And now I, I have this nervous laugh. Now my laugh, as you heard, 
It's a little different, you know, it's like, <laughs> when I'm nervous, it's loud and obnoxious, and I can't stop it. And I'm going, I'm standing there going, <laughs> all of a sudden I'm realizing it sounds like moose mating call. <laughs> Do you know how I figured it out? <laughs> I'm, I'm standing there going, <laughs> And I hear behind me, <laughs> Now I'm afraid to fall down. <laughs> Half hour later, ski patrol comes up. And the guy looks at me and says, You must be Mr. Skier. <laughs> they took away my skis, my poles, they put me in a body bag. It's very embarrassing to be in a body bag when you're not dead. <laughs> they dragged me all the way back to the, to the base of the mountain. I hit every bump on the way. And I'm thinking, I'll never lie to my wife again. And I'm sitting in the lodge and I'm drinking hot cocoa and Linda walks in and she said, so how was your run, Mr. Skier? I said, I can do it lying down. I didn't like to her, <laughs> but it's just communication. That's, what, that's all it is. You know, I, I, I'm learning to communicate. Uh, the other day, we were sitting, Linda and I, uh, discussing family planning. And Linda said, Jakob, you know, one of us should consider having a vasectomy. <laughs> I knew who the one was. I didn't know what the vasectomy was. I looked it up, scared me to death. You know what it entails? Two things. One, very sharp. The other one is mine. I don't even trim my beard when I'm naked. I, I called the doctor. I called the doctor next day. And I was in panic, and he said to me, listen, listen, look at the bright side. If you have a vasectomy, you can be intimate with your wife every day. I said, doctor, can you put that in writing? <laughs> Honey, I'm not being pushy. I have a prescription. <laughs> It's time for the refill. <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell you why I would like to have a big family. I believe there are children put on this planet to teach you something that no one else can, that unconditional love. When your child comes over and hugs you, so what if 10 minutes ago she shaved a cat? <laughs> it was ugly anyway. <laughs> and it's not our cat. It's Rusty's cat. <laughs> Going through all these experiences made me realize something very important, I think, that when I look at someone or something, I need to take my time to see. Just like what my dad said about the stars at night. When I first looked at my in-laws, I looked at them as people who will never accept me. And what I see now is sincere Americans who are trying to be accepted themselves. I looked at my newborn children as helpless babies, and what I see now are curious kids who are going to help me grow. I looked at Rusty, As obnoxious, abrasive person, and what I see now is loyal and compassionate friend to my wife. But when I came to this country, I didn't have to look far to see the American dream. And just like the stars, it's always there. Thank you very much. <laughs>